Okay, so another month has flown by and we are looking at the back side of August. I mean the back end of August. And it's that time again, guys. Prop firm recap for August 2024. Let's go over all the news and the updates. What has happened in the prop firm world? Well, the first thing I like to look at is the any new prop firm. So the only one I could really find is this one called LPCAP. If you go to www.lpcap.com, you can have a look at them. I'm not going to be going to the website now. I'm just doing a, a brief mention on any new ones I found. I'd love to hear from you guys. Did you guys hear of any new prop firms popping up in August because this is the only one I could find and I do love kind of coming back to you guys if there's anything I missed I want you guys to let me know next is let's just have a look at all the news everything that has happened in August okay guys so here we go so the first thing I want to talk about is not too long after my flash funding was acquired by sway funded you remember me talking about that last month they've now also gone ahead and acquired glow node and karma prop traders so it looks like my flash funding is definitely acquiring as many of the smaller maybe struggling prop firms as they can which is an interesting one it seems like they're trying to get as many new customers as they can and this is maybe one way to do it it'll be interesting to see how many more prop firms sway funded actually goes in and acquires but we're going to watch the space and keep an eye out for that the next thing i want to talk about is sfx now accepting payments from all African countries. Now, we're going to have a look at this and talk about this. Now, before we carry on, I just want to give a shout out to ForexPropReviews.com. I get a lot of my news from them. And the other place I get a lot of my news is StartBusinessOnline.com. These guys have some good news coming in all the time for prop firms in particular. So I like to gather my news from these two. And I also look at other um, sources like X and things like that. But for the most part, these are the main places that I'm getting a lot of my news from so I'd like to just shout them out but anyway let's go back to SFX funded so now accepting payments from all African countries we've seen this kind of opening up to African countries for prop firms but there's actually something else I want to talk about in a bit where there's not so much good news for a couple of uh, African countries where they've actually stopped going to these countries and we're going to be talking about that in a little bit but sfx funded has announced that they are now accepting a variety of payments from all african countries except tanzania and uganda now they are still accepting payments from tanzania and uganda it's not that they are not taking anyone from tanzania and uganda it's just that tanzania and uganda only have one form of payment which is the mobile money you can see here tanzania uganda only mobile money but the other ones they have multiple ways to pay and i think that's that's what that is so not going to go into too much detail i mean it's it's pretty straightforward straightforward it is what it is but very cool to see that a lot of these prop firms are now starting to accept more clients from different um, African countries which is great to see right next up we have goat funder trader triple payday a new innovative feature so what this basically is is goat funded is now allowing three payouts every month so you can every 10 days the 5th the 15th and the 25th of every month you can request a payout. So that's a pretty cool one. Now, recently I did just do a full review on Goat Funder Trader and they did pretty well. I thought they were a good prop firm, but one of the things I did say in there is they didn't really have anything that unique because one of the things we like to look at is uniqueness and any, any special features. And they didn't really have anything, but now they seem to have come in with this, which is obviously we've seen 10 day payouts before, but it's something now that they've added and it's the 5th of every month, the 15th of every month and the 25th of every month. Now. The thing that always kind of dictates whether this is a good thing or a bad thing or if it's working is how long does it actually take you to get your payout, right? So if I'm requesting on the 5th and the 15th and the 25th, but it's taking me five to 10 days to actually receive that payout, then you know you're not really getting three payouts in a month so this is important to note so we'll keep an eye on that but pretty cool that these guys are always innovating always looking to you know add new features and they did a rate fairly highly when i did the prop firm review so make sure you go over to that which was just recent have a look at our channel if you haven't subscribed subscribe and you can go and access the prop firm review video that i did for goat funder trader it's quite interesting and they did fairly well i was quite impressed with uh, a lot of stuff they have there the next one i want to speak about is the funder trader they never seem to go away, although we thought they went away, but they're always kind of hanging in there. There's two things I want to talk about today in terms of the Funder Trader TFT. They have introduced specific add-ons available for each challenge type. Now, this is not necessarily something new. We see a lot of the prop firms now doing that because what that does is it kind of allows them to come in at a very low, cheap fee 
but they are kind of only giving you the very basics. And then as you add the things that you would be expecting to see for these challenges, you pay a little bit of extra. So for example, things like getting paid twice in a month, you would have to pay a bit more. Maybe increasing your leverage, you'd have to pay a bit more. Maybe increase your profit split. So instead of a 75%, 80%, you can pay a little bit more, which will give you access to a 90, 10 split. So things like that, they are looking at, uh, they've introduced that. Like I said, it's just adding certain things. Like here, they give you an example, standard challenge add-on. You can add things like EA and trade copiers, weekly withdrawals, bi-weekly withdrawals, 95% reward split and additional drawdown. So these are the kind of things that you can look at adding on. Now, I suppose each of the different types of challenges they have, you know, maybe have different types of add-ons. So you'd have to go over to the website and have a look, but don't jump the gun just yet because one thing I do want to talk about is the next thing based on uh, the funder trader. And this, that's this over here, TFT important payouts update. So what I want to talk about guys is obviously they are, you know, trying very hard to kind of catch up with their payouts and all of that stuff and give people their accounts back. And I want to talk about the stats that we have so far up to date in terms of where they are. Pending affiliate payouts, I'm not going to talk too much about that, but they've managed to pay out 55% of their affiliates. Pending trader payouts sent is only on 30%. So that's fairly low considering, you know, how long they have actually been back. And they are kind of doing it very slowly. They're starting with smaller accounts only. I think the max that they've started giving back now is 50K accounts. Now I talked about this in the last one. I had 50K funded account with them, which I never traded on. I did get my coupon code to get that free. I don't get the account back. I have to still take the challenge. And then I also had two other accounts that were uh, basically in challenge in the challenge phase in phase one. And I've got those coupons as, as well. So now I have three accounts waiting to trade with them, but I'm a little bit hesitant to actually trade them. And I'll tell you why. And this is why I say to you, maybe just hang on before you buy into them, even though they are kind of really trying to make the moves to attract more. You've got to understand that it makes sense for them to attract more traders because they seem to still be struggling to get all the people that are owed money, get them their money. So they are still playing catch up a little bit. So, you know, it's good to see that they are being upfront and honest, but you've got to be very careful because for me, I'm, I'm like hesitant to actually start if I actually get to a funded account now and I request a payout, let's say I'm on a 50K account, I get to two and a half percent, maybe I'm requesting like a two, two and a half thousand dollar payout. How long am I actually going to wait to get that? Because if they've only paid out 30% of the people that are still owed, am I going to the back of that line? Am I going to be in a queue at the back of the line of people that are waiting to be paid? And how long is it going to be, you know, until I actually get a payout? So that's my only issue with this now. You know, it's it sucks because I can see they're trying really hard to come back. But at the same time, I'm not going to be rushing in to get accounts because if they still have some ground to catch up, you know, I'm not going to be throwing money in yet. The only reason I have any accounts with them is because they've given me the coupon codes. But I, I don't think I would necessarily be buying in yet. And as you can see, accounts restored 70%. The remainder of those accounts, I think are 100 account, 100K and bigger. They haven't restored any of those yet. So it'll be interesting to see. I'm sure next month, we're still gonna be doing a lot more talk on TFT. Are they coming back? How they're doing? I'd love to see these guys come back, but they're climbing a very steep hill at the moment. So we'll keep, keep an eye and see how that all goes. So next one we've got is SFX funded, welcoming back US traders. So that's great news. SFX are saying that they are welcoming traders from the US back in. So that's good to see that prop firms are starting to say US traders come back. I just popped over to their, their website quickly and just kind of see if I can see exactly what we are trading with here. So it looks like, is that trade locker? It looks like, okay, match trader, there we go. So the, as I said, that's probably the reason they are kind of bringing uh, US traders back is because they're using match trader. So, you know, great to see though. And uh, looks like they have got quite a few secure payments as well. So good to see. American traders back with SFX funded. Then unfortunately we saw the uh, closing of another prop firm in August, Indigo Trader Funding confirmed it shut down back in on the 21st of August, 2021. Let's have a look at that article. So here we go guys, just having a look at this little article over here, Indigo Trader Funding, a prop trading fr firm confirmed it shut down today. This was the 21st of August, citing a failure in its business endeavor. The company has ceased all operations and is 
Resolve partnership. Prior to the uh, announcement, Indigo Funded Trading had already applied to re be removed from the UK's official company register and had gone silent on social media, leaving customers confused. So there we go, guys. Another prop firm bites the dust. Okay, and then this is the one I was talking about before, guys. Top tier trader has announced that effective August 21st, 2024, they will no longer accept customers from Nigeria and Ethiopia. As you can see now, this is basically because um, there's been a lot of dodgy stuff happening, especially when it comes to the KYC submissions from these countries. As it says here, no longer accept customers from Nigeria and Ethiopia for their trading platform. This decision comes in a response to a significant coupon abuse and rise in deceptive KYC submissions from these countries. The move is aimed to aimed at maintaining fairness and integrity for all users worldwide. You know, this is sad to see because, you know, in the earlier bit of news I was talking about, you know, they, a lot more prop firms are opening up to African countries. But unfortunately, if this keeps happening, then, you know, they kind of kind of going to open to African countries if there is this kind of thing that's happening where KYC, there's deceptive KYC, I imagine a lot of fraudulent stuff happening, then they're gonna end up just saying, okay, we can't, you know? So it's sad to see because I think there's so much potential. There's so many good traders and so many traders that wanna trade from the African countries. Um, you know, I hope that we see less and less of this. I think it happens worldwide, but I think maybe, you know, some of the African countries, especially Nigeria, where you see a lot of fraudulent type things happening anyway, it's kind of gonna be happening. But hopefully as a result, you know, just a couple countries doing this is not gonna take down all of the other countries not going to affect all the other countries and we're still going to see a growth in the prop space in african countries so but a, a bit of sad news to see that this is happening but you know it's kind of it's, it comes with the territory it is going to happen and you know we are going to see that but i just hope that this doesn't affect the kind of general momentum that we have shifting into african countries for these prop firms you know coming in and allowing african countries to trade so let's just watch the space see what happens but let's hope that uh, things do get better right sfx again guys Welcome US. No, we've already mentioned that. Sorry, I've, I've put that twice. So let's go to the next one. I don't know why I've got that twice. Maybe because it's really good news. So we'll mention it twice. <laughs> SFX welping, welcoming US traders. Right, we've already mentioned that. So next, next. This is an interesting one, guys. You know, I did not think this month I would be saying the words my Forex funds. But here we go. My Forex funds case gets senators interest so this was an interesting one okay so here we go guys this is an interesting one like i mentioned the my forex funds case has drawn the attention of the u.s senator chuck grassley who has questioned the commodity futures trading commission cftc about its handling of the situation in a letter sent on august 22nd 2024 so very recently senator grassley asked the cftc chairman rostin benham to clarify the process and procedure of the agency's administrative action particularly concerning alleged misconduct by CFTC staff. The CFTC had previously sued MyForex Funds, freezing its assets and those of its CEO over the alleged fund misappropriation. However, some funds were actually tax payments, leading the court to unfreeze a significant portion of the assets. MyForex Funds now claims that CFTC, CFTC misled the court to secure the freeze and is seeking sanctions against the regulator. So this is very interesting to see that, you know, this, the My Forex funds thing is not over and there is apparently a court hearing or there is a hearing on the sanctions order against the CFTC, which is set to take place the 19th and 20th of September. So this coming month. So we will be updating you on this. Does this mean that they are gonna come back? I don't think so, but who knows, you know, maybe something happens and as a result, they potentially can. I don't think so. I just think that, you know, certain things were mishandled and my Forex funds wants to just, you know, maybe sort that out. So but it'll be interesting to kind of watch the space and see what actually comes of this. All right, next one, guys. Funded next C trader issue temporary suspensions of new 100k and 200k accounts. So Funded Next had an issue with their C trader platform sort of mid towards the end, mid end of August. What they did is there was a temporary suspension on any new 100k and 200k accounts. So this was due, so as you can see, yeah, this was due to technical issues. The measure necessary to address the platform's problems affects only C trader accounts. So if you had accounts on MT5, every 
everything was running as normal and I think they were still taking on new customers on the MT5 platform. And this was actually towards the 28th of August. So not even that long ago, towards the end of last week uh, that this came up. So I've not seen any update on this. Uh, if there's anyone with Funded Next that knows any more information, I'd love you to pop that in the comments uh, and just give an update on that. And then the final thing we're gonna be looking at here, guys, is, so I thought this was a very interesting one, guys. Apex Trader funding requires recording your trades for two days. So Apex Funded Trading is an introducing a new requirement for traders to record their trades over a two-day period as a part of an effort to expedite the payout process. The firm which has faced criticism for delayed payouts claims this move is intended to enhance security and fraud detection. However, this has obviously sparked outrage amongst the traders who think it's an excessive invasion of privacy, potential risk to the confidentiality of their trading strategies, obviously. So, you know, what they're basically saying is not only are you supposed to be recording your screen of your trades as they take place and while they take place, for two days, but also recording yourself while taking these trades. So you need two recordings. You need a recording of yourself and a recording of your screen. There's, as you can imagine, there's been huge, a huge kind of outcry over this. People saying, you know, this is a invasion of privacy because people obviously like to keep their strategies close to themselves. They don't like to tell people, you know, because some people are also selling their strategies as they make money from them. It's a tough one, you know. What would you guys, what do you guys think? Anyone here with Apex Trader Funding, have you guys seen this? Have you had to implement it? I'd love to hear from you guys what your thoughts on this, but I think, yeah, this is kind of pushing it a bit too far. And I think they, they're they clutching at straws here because from what I've read that they are kind of very far behind or there's a lot of issues with payouts as it stands. A little bit worrying for this and I hope this doesn't become a thing, but I can't see this becoming a thing because I think this is you know, this is pushing it too far to have to record yourself taking your trades. I, I it's I, I can't see other prop firms following suit and I hope it doesn't become a thing. OK, guys, now the final thing, jumping over to propfirmmatch.com because they have a great section where they just do a little update on all the rule changes. So we're just going to go through some of these rule changes and have a look at what has happened in terms of rule changes. So Alpha Futures, new payment method, which is really cool. Not really a rule change, but they are now, Rise has been added to their payment method. So now on a funded account, you're required to meet a minimum of five trading days. A trading day is defined by, so basically you, it has to be similar to how you would be trading normally. So if you're normally taking 20 lots, you can't just do three or four days at you know 0.2 lots. It's gotta be close within kind of the amount you would be trading anyway. So it'll be interesting to see how they actually do that. So this requirement applies only to first payout cycle on a funded account and does not result in a soft or hard breach. A little bit kind of gray there, I think. So it'll be interesting to see how they push forward with that. Top step, remove daily loss limit on Top Step X. Starting on August 25th, the new Top Step X accounts will no longer have daily loss limits. This change applies only to trading combines and X and express funded accounts on the Top Step, Top Step X platform. Goat funded new payment methods. I've talked about this. They have added PayPal to the payment methods, but this is only how you can pay to pay for your account. I don't think that is actually for getting your payouts. Um, I think they only have one method for that. Okay, so Alpha Capital Group guys, Alpha Pro program update. Holding trades over the weekend is now restricted on pro qualified accounts. So make sure you are aware of that if you are trading with Alpha Capital, but I'm sure you would have already been made aware of that. So with Finitive Funding, a new payment option for crypto, added now payments for crypto payments, which is good. Funded next, also new payment options. They've now added Apple Pay and Google Pay to their payment options, which is cool to see. So then Elite Trader Funding, if you reach the daily loss limit on your account, you will get a soft breach. Your account will be prevented from placing any new trades until the start of the next day. So I like that soft breach, you know, they're not just breaching people straight up. You get a soft breach. So it's, it's. I think it's better that way. And then Effectify, obviously we've seen the new trading platform, DX Trade. Uh, added to the trading platforms. Then Alpha Capital adding a inactivity rule update. All accounts in all stages are limited to a 30 day inactivity period. So you've got to make sure that you are not leaving your account for more than 30 days. 
And then Effectify, obviously we saw this, that the MetaTrader platform has been ceased to be offered for US traders. So all current US traders will be migrated, I think have already been migrated to DX Trade platform. Now this is US traders only. If you are international trader with Effectify, you can continue continue to use MetaTrader. A goat funder, this is the payout cycle. We've already spoken about this. The 5th, the 15th and the 25th, we talked about that. So that's not gonna touch on that again. Now we're coming up towards the beginning of August. So the trading print talking about launching of a new futures program introducing the futures prime program uh, what else have we got funded next new payment option for nigeria i talked about that as well i've talked about that in some of the shorts i've done recently um, and then what else have we got my funded FX, new data feed and platforms removing rhythmic and adding volumetric trading web platform a new data feed DX feed. Simulator funded resets for starter accounts, introducing SIM funded resets for new starter accounts. If your account gets suspended after payout, you can revive it for a third of the maximum payout cost. So they've uh, added a few things like that. So for example, reset fees for a 50K is 450, for 100K, 800. So essentially you get given the option to pay that amount to reset and you can carry on trading rather than actually paying slightly less, but having to take the whole phase one phase to again so that's quite an interesting feature and that's it for august guys that's all the updates um so that's it guys that's all the news all the rule changes uh, i hope that covers everything now one thing i do want to talk about is if you guys are interested in prop firms which i'm sure you are because you clicked on this video make sure you go to www.propfarming.com where you can get all the information on our ea called titan x which has currently got over 920 of our traders funded with prop firms along with the prop firming blueprint that we offer so if you want to get funded if you've been struggling but you still are determined to get there then go over to www.propfarming.com where you can watch a little demo and fill in a form and jump on to this incredible program with that being said guys that's the news for august that's everything prop firm related that i could find in august like i said if there's anything that i missed please pop that down in the comments because I love when you guys give me some information that I missed and it helps all the people that are watching this as well to just catch up on anything. And as ever, guys, enjoy the rest of your day, week, and happy trading. And we will catch you guys for the next Prop Firm review video. Bye for now.